not killed them, but injured, does that Rosa change it around? Not for me. So you say, I'm going to shoot whoever. I would not be able to shoot. I'll probably wait, but um, reactions are hot, and most likely out of nervousness, I'll probably do it. Okay, so you and you should not be punished for this. No, they are breaking into my property. Go ahead, Phil. Aren't there cases where people go to jail, like you know, so they try to, they catch somebody trying to break into their car or something like that, and the person runs off and they shoot them in the back? That's another like defending your property at that point. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if the people are like you know coming in or like halfway trying to leave, that. Yeah, now in fairness, remember, they were entering his residence. So since they were entering his residence, you could probably make an argument that there is some threat there. Having said this, isn't it interesting? Phil was the one that shot the guy that robbed his convenience store when he's running away. And here is Phil. Here is Phil saying, if you shoot somebody when they're running away, you could be liable. No, I'm not shooting some, like, no, I, that, I wouldn't have done that either. But, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Now I saw your hand. I don't know of that one right off, but somehow that doesn't surprise me. But go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, but you talk, I mean, yes. Does someone have the right to defend? Does someone have a right to defend their own home? Focus on that. Um, but that, like, <laughs> and that's fine. Like, yes, you're absolutely able to defend your own home. Okay. But at some point, there also must be a level of responsibility. Of do you just go shooting and ask questions later, or do you? And what do you say? Well, I mean, I understand crime of passion, but if you're, if you're going to have... A yeah, but in fairness, okay, there's no crime of passion here. In fairness, there, this is premeditated because he went back upstairs to get those bullets. Which is why you get a pump action, because that's your warning. <laughs> so you... Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, fair enough. So, so you're saying in this instance that if somebody breaks into Nancy's home and she shot a 14 and a 15-year-old boy that were both unarmed... She maybe should have some criminal liability to this. I don't know if she should necessarily have criminal liability, the first but I'm saying there's a, uh, there's a level of responsibility it's on the gun owner who is defending their home to as reasonably assess the situation before reacting yeah. uh, emotionally. Okay. Go ahead, Nushin. There was a similar case just earlier this week um, in New York with a guy who worked at McDonald's and two women were having an argument with him. They jumped over the counter oh, yeah. and yeah. beat them with a metal rod. And when they tried to it's get back up, he beat them, again, beat them back down because they're still behind the counter. They still could be threatening him. And the uh, the jury said that's that's fine because they're trying to get back up after they've been beat down with a metal rod. You don't get back up unless you're going to do something. So. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of the same down. thing because, like, a lot of people are arguing it's excessive force because he's beating them while they're still down. But, I mean, if you're trying to get back up and you just jumped a counter, I'm still going to think you're going to try and harm me after I just smack you with a rod. Understand on this, and there's a couple of different ways that you can look at this, but, but you hit on something, Phil, with what you said just a second ago, this idea of when you're in danger. If I'm coming at you, or if I'm coming at your boyfriend, <laughs> believe it or not, oh, I don't want to knock down those on you. Um, believe it or not, if, if I'm coming at you, you can shoot me because I'm threatening you in this regard. If I'm coming at somebody you love, or Jose, <laughs> indeed, you could shoot me at that point as well, even though my back is to you because I am threatening the loved one. So if you had a child or something along those lines, understand though, if I am running away, leaving your house, even if I am carrying your property and you shoot me in the back, under many state laws, you are now going to be liable. So with this in mind, be careful, even though your rights were violated, and I agree with you 100% notion on this, the fact is, is that if they are actually trying to flee, even if they're taking something that is priceless, not necessarily from an economic viewpoint, but from a sentimental one, you can't get them. If you go after them, you are going to be held responsible. Go ahead, Sudar. Even if they're not seriously injured, you just like wound them on a leg or something. To you could still that. conceivably be liable. Yeah, and, and here's the other piece to this. <laughs> if you're going to shoot somebody, and I should be careful with the camera going, kill them. <laughs> because dead men tell no tales. Dead women tell no tales either. When you think about it, if you shoot somebody and injure them as they're running away, at that point when you think about it, they could conceivably still give an unbelievable story if you finish them off. <laughs> they're not going to be able to challenge your story in that regard. And, and don't, don't, I'm not saying go kill people. Marwin, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> but, but having said this, bear that in mind. Florida actually has a law, and, and I don't believe we've talked about this in here, but Florida has a gun law that basically says that you can shoot somebody if you feel threatened. 
You can shoot somebody if you feel threatened. And they actually give out pamphlets in the in the airports there. Yeah, and, and, we did. Yeah, and it's the same exact kind of thing. If you're dealing with this Florida law, if they are going to be able to challenge your version of events, then indeed you make sure that you hit them where it counts because then they can't actually challenge it. Go ahead. Uh, there's this story I heard. I don't know if it's true, true or not, but there was a guy robbing a gun sh store and he got gunned down by everyone in there. And yeah. Killed. Would that be relative? That. Actually, that could be. That actually could be. And, and and see, when you think about it, I mean, think about it like this. I mean, if it was if it was you and Adriana and Sardar and Alexis, and it was Miguel's gun store, and for whatever reason, I don't know, Stephanie decided that she was robbing it. Okay, if her back is to y'all, but Miguel is the one that's in danger, some places might argue that you are doing civic duty by shooting Stephanie. Other places might say, she is not threatening you, so if you shoot her in the back, that indeed would be liability on you, even if you were helping Miguel, but none of you are married or related to Miguel, so it's not like that's a direct threat to you in some way. You see what I'm saying on this? Let me give you a different one. Bernie Getz. Anybody ever heard of Bernie Getz? Bernie Getz was the subway vigilante in New York from a number of decades ago. Bernie Getz was a nerdy sort of guy. He was a computer uh, worker, if I'm not mistaken. He had the pocket protector and all of these things. He had the really thick-brimmed glasses, and he had the short sleeve shirts. You know what I'm talking about, the button-down with the tie, whatnot. Bernie Getz was a natural to basically be uh, bullied a little bit. He got on the subway, and he every day there was a, a, a gang that would, would mess around with the passengers in New York City. And indeed, this gang would come up, and they'd kind of, you know, get close. You know how people are. They kind of, you know, kind of bumping into you and touching you and all these things and making you feel nervous and violating your personal space. And then they'd ask you for money and basically be like, yeah, and you know how people do when they start to jerk a little bit. You know what's going on because they want you to flinch back kind of thing. Well, Bernie gets after a certain amount of time said, you know what the hell with this? And he got a Smith & Wesson. Smith & Wesson gun went on the subway, and those kids came at him, and indeed, Bernie Getz, after they started to do that mess with him, pulled it out and basically said, you know what, and, and the kids started to run. Pa, pa, pa. He opened it up right in the middle of the crowded subway car. Two of the kids did not get hit. One of them did. One of them did. And indeed, that kid, and you know how you ride the train and, and there's that pole? That kid was like hit. He couldn't, not down there, but he got hit. He was trying to climb the pole. And then Bernie Getz came up to him and said, you know what? I think you need another. Bam! And shot him again at close range. Oh. Oh. At the next stop, Bernie Getz got off the train. Everybody on the train was applauding what he had that done because they way. had been bullied by those same guys for years. Here is my question. Was what Bernie Getz did legal? No. 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 Why? <laughs> What's that? Why? Were they trying to harm him physically or are they just trying to take his money? Do you really know when three people kind of come up and they're all on different sides of you and they're getting closer and closer and they're jerking and all these other things, Alexis? For, for, I mean, I mean, people gave them money to get them to leave. They yeah. were coming up to him. Not, had they beaten people up? No. But had they bullied people? Yes. Was it realistic that if Bernie Getz was a middle-aged white man and these were younger kids, more of a gang type, and indeed they had surrounded him like they had done, that he would have a reasonable fear of his safety. Probably. So you're saying that it is legal for him to open up that gun. Well, you also have to think it's in a very crowded subway So he could have hit someone else. He could have hit someone else. Absolutely. Someone okay, else. so you're saying that no, it's not legal. Even though they all applauded <laughs> Alexis. Go ahead, Nusha. You can barely have a one-inch blade in New York City, let alone a gun legally. Mm -hmm. So by, by that alone, I'm figuring he's breaking the law just by carrying. Good catch on this. It was an unregistered Smith & Wesson. Yeah, Go ahead, Nancy. Well, if he's been bullied for a long time, and those people never actually had a gun or anything like that to threaten his life, then just one day he randomly like has a gun, wants a gun to them, basically he's like endangering their life. And in a way, it's not reciprocated because what they're doing to him was not what he did to them. So he's causing more damage to them. All right, so this is going to what Jordan said.